everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. Today's episode is a little different. We're not going to talk about how to edit. We're going to talk about what to select to edit. So let's jump in and I'll explain more. So what I've learned over the years in teaching Lightroom and in mentoring and working with photographers, we can all learn the basics of editing. No matter what program you use, you can learn how to edit. It's not that hard or challenging. There are tweaks to it, but we can learn to edit a basic image. The real challenge is knowing what and when to edit an image. So I just got back from doing kind of a photo walk, photo shoot at some local gardens, and I thought I would just walk you through some ideas and point out some things that I would look to edit. They're not your common factors when you're editing an image. But what I have found through the years is they really make an impact in your final image, and a lot of times they go unnoticed. So I thought I'd point out some of these key tips to you and hope that they'll help you in your photography. So let's just get started and we'll just look at some images as we go. Now, some of these, of course, I shot in a very, very soft manner. So this is a Spanish bluebell image. And I think for this image, I would decide kind of which one I liked. I would probably use, take this into Photoshop and use the clone tool to clean up these two areas. So my pointer is kind of going crazy here, but I would probably clean up those two areas and maybe remove this guy at the bottom. So I'm always looking at the distracting elements and the things in the four corners to really make sure I bring out detail. I would also make sure in this image that I probably add a little bit of contrast because look what that does to these gorgeous blue flowers. And I would also add a little pop of that saturation. I really want those guys to stand out and maybe even desaturate the green. But I definitely would address this little black spot and this little guy at the bottom. So let's keep going along. These were some images that I took where the background was so compressed and beautiful. I really love this one that looks like a painting. But our main flower is not standing out. I don't see a lot of distracting elements, but I think I would definitely work on making this main image pop in the scene. A couple ways we can do that, we could definitely add a little bit of contrast. We could also use a mask to then bring this area out or even maybe fade or blur some of our background. So I would try a few things to see if I could modify and make the Spanish bluebells pop just as much as the back of the image. Okay, so let's go along to some different ones. So this was an image of intentional camera movement. I really wanted to get down low. Here's the standalone image, and I wanted to just give this image some beauty and some movement. Now I like it except for this top part. So this is where this is an image that I would try to save. I would try to see if I could remove and clone that area out, clean up a little bit over here, you can see right where I'm pointing, we've got that um, spot right here. So I'd clean that up and I would just see if I could save this image. It would be worth giving it just a couple minutes. Now, if I can't, I also have this beautiful image that I took. So I had just a little bit of camera movement. So this would be an image I would take into Photoshop. I would remove this red marking, probably this white flower, and I would add some additional motion blur to the green parts of the image just to really make that fun motion blur look. So this is the next one in my list. So this one had the beautiful water drops on it. I just love this flower curl. This line coming over to me is distracting. It's not telling the story. So that would be a line that I would remove. I would also consider bringing some of this light into this section of the image as well. Now I would need to use Photoshop for that, but that's okay. I think it would be well worth it. All right, let's jump over to some different images and I've got a landscape scene and this image is pretty clean. I think you just have to decide 
what you want to do to this image. For me, it would definitely be saturating the colors in the trees, really bringing out the detail of this beautiful spring scene, and maybe even adding a vignette. Um, you could also clean up the sidewalk if you wanted to, but not much that I need to do with this image. So this is an example of an image I'm really happy with straight out of camera. I'd probably do just a little pop in the center of the flower. To do that, I would use the mask, come over here and grab the brush. I am just going to enlarge my brush, just go right here in the center area, and then pop the exposure just a little bit to really bring that to life. So otherwise, I think it's a really pretty image and one I don't need to do a lot with. Now, if we come over, I did do some more intentional camera movement images. So these are very artistic. I know for some of you, you may not like this style of photography, but these would be images that I would really work on to continue to bring out the detail. I just love how these flowers look and um, I would need to straighten this image and definitely want to bring out some contrast. That is the number one key with intentional camera movement images. Now I've got some of the original image that I could play with. And again, I've got some of my favorite here. I would definitely clone this area using Photoshop to, to make these flowers blend just to give this an entirely clean scene. I would also come in and do some straightening. Just get that nice and straight, and then I would clone this area. Now you've heard me say Photoshop quite a few times. I do like to use Photoshop to remove things that are distracting and to clone. I have a video all about cloning with Photoshop. It's really easy to master. I encourage you to check that out if you are new to that. Now this is an image that I already made some tweaks on, but let me reset it for you because I really liked how this one turned out. So I had a choice when I shot this. I loved this tulip, but I really needed to frame it. So a couple things that I would do with this image is definitely enhance the saturation, and then I'd probably use the new tool Lens Blur. So I would come down and want to apply a lens blur to just soften the area around the image. Again, I'm looking at all four areas and I just think that softness is going to really enhance the center of my image. So that would probably be what I would do with that one. All right, and then I've got a couple more. Let's see some of these. So these were some that I took up close and I used some different techniques in camera and out of camera. And for these images, there's not a lot of cleanup. So again, I would work on my focal flower, probably enhancing the color, maybe just um, really popping that blue and maybe even doing a little bit of contrast. But sometimes you get images that you don't have to do a whole lot. This one probably needs a little crop adjustment so we'll come in and just straighten that up a little bit. All right, so not, not a whole lot with that one, which is always nice. Now I've got this image here that has a few distracting elements. I've got this area sticking out right here, a little bit of the dirt. I really love the shape of this tulip. I think it's very artistic. So this would be an image I would take into Photoshop and play around with it some more. All right, so I just wanted to give you some ideas of some basic edits that I would do, some thoughts that I have when I'm editing, and some of the changes and tweaks that I would make. So why don't we take just a minute and we'll go ahead and edit this one in Photoshop together, and I can give you a little bit more about my process. So if you wanna stick around, please do. Um, if you're gonna jump off from today's video, be sure to click like and subscribe. I really appreciate your time in doing that. All right, so for me to clean up this image really quick, I'm gonna start with the Remove tool, and I'm gonna come in and just work on cleaning up this area that I don't really need. It's just not necessary to my image, so I'm gonna get rid of that right away. All right, so that's gonna do it with the Remove tool. It's gonna take just a minute, 
The remove tool is so easy to use in Photoshop. It is your new, new best friend. All right, so next I'm gonna duplicate that layer so I have a copy. I'm gonna come over and use the clone tool. So again, I'm going to enlarge it, click the option key to target, and if you haven't seen my video on the clone tool, let's see, I'm not sure why it's telling me that. Let's go back, there we go. I would encourage you to watch it because I love using the clone tool. And I think it's a really helpful way to just bring, um, let's scroll up here a little bit, to really make sure that you're getting your final image as beautiful as it can be and keeping it the way, kind of the way you want it. I like to go to the four corners because sometimes I decide I want to print an image and you don't want those corners um, to just stand out when you print. So I'm just going to cover those up a little bit and um, maybe get right in there. And then I think I'm going to come in with this shade of green and just come in and add a little bit of that down here. So I just go over it with multiple colors, multiple methods, just using that clone tool to kind of clean things up. So let's look at that before and after. What a nice difference. It still looks very natural, but we've just done that. Now we could do the same thing at the top of the image if you wanted to. I'm going to actually make the brush even bigger so we can go much faster. And let's get this um, target tool right here. And let's see. Let's make it a little bit smaller. If you ever have a hard time with the clone tool, just make it a little bit smaller. And yeah, you can just come in with that. Now the other option is we could also grab our paint dropper, select that light green color, grab our paint tool. I'm gonna to start at about 30 or 50% opacity. And I'm just gonna come in and go over it with that color. Now you can increase your paint as you want to. You could take it up to about 50. We're just adding that color. And then to make it look really natural, what I'm going to do is go add this lighter color, grab the brush, and just kind of pop it on, make it kind of big, just to kind of bring that in there, make it look pretty natural. And then we've got kind of this natural background that mimics the bottom of our image and just looks really smooth and natural. All right, we haven't done anything to our flower yet, but this flower is just so beautiful on its own. Now, if you were going to print this and the shadows bother you, let's go back to the clone tool. And really quick, we could try just cloning the white here. So it takes a little bit of time, but we could come in and clone that shadow out. So that is one way that you could deal with that. And that's probably my favorite method. Now you could also make sure for some reason I don't have a soft round brush. I knew something wasn't working quite right. So always double check your brush because sometimes you may not have the brush that you think you have. Okay, yeah, just gonna come up and make sure this really matches just going to get rid of that shadow and still keeping it all natural we're just doing a little bit of cleanup and then come in right here and there we go the edge maybe just do a little bit around there and come down with it so very nice I think if I zoom in, it looks good. You can also use your eraser if you get too close to the edge and feel like you need to erase it a little bit, you can come in with that. But I think it looks really nice. And I do like that we were able to get rid of that shadow. Look before and look after. Now at this point, I would probably go ahead and make a copy. And I think this image needs a little bit of oil paint. So I am going to stylize with some oil paint. I like to keep my oil paint all the way over to the right and a little bit over to the left, and that way I get a nice smooth oil paint. 
So I'm going to click OK. And it just smooths out that white, really makes everything look beautiful, and even our background. Now, if you wanted to move or blur your background even more, then what I would encourage you to do is duplicate your background. Let's select our subject. We're going to let this run through, and it should select it for us really nicely. There we go. I'm going to invert it. Now I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We're just going to apply a little bit of blur to this background, a little extra. There we go. Click OK. Now we can do Command or Control D, and there we've got, see the detail before, and just a little bit softer blur and that beautiful oil paint. So it's just giving it a really magical, um, beautiful look. Now we could also go back and reduce the highlights a little bit, make some of those final tweaks, but that is just in a couple quick steps how I would work to clean up this beautiful sweet tulip image. Didn't take a lot of time. I encourage you again to watch the video. I'll link it below on cloning in Photoshop. It is a tool that I know you're going to want to use. Thanks so much.